welcome you into the Nike EYBL Scholastic at the Bob McKillop Invitational on League Ready. We are live from Hofstra University in Hempstead, New York for some big time college hoops. I'm Pat O'Keefe along with Austin Johnson and we're ready for the main event. Tonight's matchup featuring a pair of Nike EYBL Scholastic teams. Montverde Academy Eagles, the number one team in the country, taking on number two, the Long Island Lutheran Crusaders. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Nike, and we begin with the Eagles, an unblemished record this year of 27 and 0. A lot of Division I talent in the starting lineup. Headlined by Robert Wright and Curtis Givens. Up front, Liam McNeely, Cooper Flagg, the number one recruit in the country, along with Derek Queen. Montverde, 27 and 0. Among those 27 wins, a victory over Long Island Lutheran in the City of Palms Classic in Florida. As for the Crusaders, in the recently released ESPN Top 25, number two in the country, the headliner there, VJ Edgecombe, the senior from the Bahamas, headed to Baylor. Nigel James and the veteran Caden Mingo, along with Ben Michaels and Alir Malouk, round out the starting five for the Crusaders who come in with a record of 16 and three. All right, Austin, we've been waiting all day long for this matchup, the main event to say the least. When the rankings came out this week and we saw that it was officially number one against number two, it just ratcheted up the level of excitement you could feel in this building. Not a seat to be had here at Hofstra University and the anticipation has been bubbling all week long. There is such an embarrassment of riches of talent that will be showcased out here on the basketball court. And we see two players that are gonna be competing here tonight. But how about going to the same college? They'll be backcourt mates in the near future. You gotta be excited if you're a Baylor Bears fan. This is what it's about, seeing what the future holds for your program at the next level. Scott Drew, the head coach of the Baylor Bears, clearly happy about his incoming starting backcourt. Baylor, in many ways, has become known as Guard U as they continue to churn out high-impact, talented players in the backcourt. As for Montverde, a lot of people in the New York metropolitan area tonight getting their first in-person look at the number one player in the country, the 6'9 senior out of Newport, Maine, Cooper Flagg. Enjoy it while you can. It's a beautiful thing that Coach Kevin Boyle essentially treats this program like a high Division I basketball team, and they travel all throughout this nation, and they go on a road show showcasing their talent. And enjoy Cooper Flagg while you have him here at the grassroots level. Enjoy him when he gets to the Division I level because you can imagine that he'll have his eyes set on the NBA ranks. That Division I level next year, of course, will be at Duke University. You look at this Montverde Academy team that's undefeated on the season so far and really in many ways unchallenged. That's how dominant they've been. And you have heard whispers that are turning into louder than that in recent weeks that this may be the most talented prep team in history. I mean, and, and that's something hearing and seeing the success that Montverde has had over the years. When you look at this long list of NBA players that have come and gone for Kevin Boyle in this program, it's embarrassing. <laughs> but it also speaks to just how truly talented and well-balanced this group is. But I will say that if there is a team out there that can challenge him, it is the number two Long Island Luthan Crusaders, led by B.J. Edgecombe, Caden Mingo, Kyan Anthony. They got the guard play that is dynamic, and guards can win you these types of games. Long Island Lutheran a little thin along the front line. Their top big man, God's Will, Air Hareen, out right now with an injured foot, an injury he suffered in game number two. The hope is that he could be ready if Luhai receives an invitation to the national tournament, but they'll have to make a go without him tonight. You have Derek Queen, the only starter for Montverde, not declared to a college, not declared to a high major Division I program, but he's ranked 10th in the country and is the second ranked power forward 
in the class of 2024. He's in the jump circle right now. Alir Malouk, who leads the league in blocks. We are underway. Malouk taps it into the backcourt. It is run down by Edgecombe into the hands of Caden Mingo. From nearby here, Farmingdale, New York. Luhai, number two. Montverde, number one, here on Long Island. And Mingo trying to penetrate. Malouk along the baseline, driving on Queen. Up over him, no, and the rebound is pulled by Liam McNeely. Going to be a lot of one-on-one -on -one showcasing the talent that are out here in the flow of what both of these teams like to do. Special opportunity here in Long Island. Queen along the baseline, a good contest by Ben Michaels, and with a full head of steam, it's Nigel James. Bottle up inside, hits the deck, and it's out of bounds off of Lehigh. James, a junior from Huntington, New York, here on Long Island, comes up hobbled a little. And that's what the Crusaders want to do, control the tempo with this speedy backcourt. Spearheaded right there, as you see, by James. Trying to get out ahead, but got to take advantage of those opportunities, especially when you're in the open court. It's the third game of a triple header and the first day of the Bob McKillop Invitational here at the MAC on the campus of Hofstra University. Lob pass inside for Queen. Excellent position. And Montverde is on the board first. Derek Green, Queen, so versatile, six foot nine. 230, the Baltimore, Maryland native getting this thing started, using and creating space. The matchup a lot of people came here to see tonight. Edgecombe against Flag that time. Edgecombe misfires. McNeely for three and a quick 5 nothing lead for the Eagles. Got to find and locate him as a three-point shooter. 13th in EYBL in field goals knocked down per game at three, a 2.3 for contest. Malouk, one-on-one -on -one here with Queen, wants to drive on him, use his agility, flips it up, off the mark. McNeely, the outlet pass to Curtis Givens. Lays it back for McNeely, who gives it back to Givens. Bounce pass inside, Queen using that frame of his off the glass, the first seven points for Montverde. So tough, he's leading this team in regards to overall scoring at 17.6 per game, six in the EYBL, and it's because of touch like that. He takes his time, a barrage of ball fakes, gets to his angles, and then attacks. They throw a double team at Edgecombe. He passes out of that offensive rebound attempt inside for Ben Michaels, and he's fouled and will go to the line with a chance to get the Crusaders on the board. Really good tracking of the basketball right there by Ben Michaels, and he is categorized as the X Factor and one of the more important players consistently makes winning plays for this Lou High Crusaders team. Two minutes and change into this game. Long Island Lutheran looking for its first point. Ben Michaels, a senior from Ipswich in the United Kingdom, gets them on the board. Chopped it up with Coach John Buck earlier this week, heading into this, and asked him, what did this mean for his program? And he just talked about having this type of showcase in his backyard in Long Island the biggest event of this season. You could arguably say it's the biggest basketball event on Long Island since the Nets won the ABA championship <laughs> with Dr. J. Taking me back. Another Long Island native as McNeely misfires on a three. Rebound is grabbed by James with a full head of steam into the front court, trying to go coast to coast. Reverse layup off the glass is good. And that is tough right there. Nigel James showing his dynamic guard play. He is tough to keep out of the lane, a little water bug. You gotta stop him with your body. Queen working from the perimeter, bottled up inside. It looked like Edgecombe got a handle of him. No, they're going to call this foul. Nigel James keeping that dribble alive. Number 10, getting to the opposite side. You keep that dribble alive, it allows you to be versatile. And that's good rec recognition right there. Only six foot and a buck 75 in weight, but he can finish with the best of them. Foul's on Alir Malouk for Luhai his first. And they're first as well. Queen to the free throw line. The big man, despite that miss, a very good free throw shooter in league play at 90%. And this, this dude can get a bucket, man. Scored 56 points in a win over Annapolis as a freshman. <laughs> you know what type of mentality you have to come in and drop that amount of points as a young buck? Misses them both here. Luhai pushing off the rebound. Caden Mingo to the basket, bottled up and knocked out of bounds, contested by Queen and Flag. It'll stay with the Crusaders. 
I'll make a reference to this now. 25 seconds on the shot clock. I don't get the sense I'm going to have to refer to that a lot tonight. <laughs> Let's monitor those possessions per team. They're going to want to get up as many shots as possible. Edgecombe has it slip out of his hands, gets it back down the lane, right up against the big man. No good. Queen with the contest and the rebound. And that's the toughness and the type of challenges to shot blockers. You have to go with that intent, but you also got to find ways to convert. Nice take by Edgecombe. Knocked out of the hands of Robert Wright. It'll stay with Montverde. Boy, a very physical start to this game, Austin, and it seems like they're letting a lot go. Inbounds, and McNeely gets good position. And a 9-4 lead for Montverde. All the way down the other way, and the left-handed finish by Nigel James as bodies hit the floor. Nigel James is locked in, ready to play. Averaging 11 and four on the year and setting the tempo for Luhai early on. James looking like he was shot out of a rocket on that possession. Here's Queen against Malouk, barreling into him, blocked from behind by Edgecombe. Flag trying to save it, and it's out of bounds off the Eagles. Don't get it twisted, Edgecombe is equally as good as a defender, as explosive as he is offensively, coming over from the weak side and timing that perfectly. Boy, he got up on that one. They've been keying defensively on VJ Edgecombe. He's got a little daylight here. No good on the three-pointer. Malut the rebound back to Edgecombe. Acrobatic move, the hang, and the finish. And there's the body control and the explosive nature that has led to him shooting up the rankings. Such a bright future. You gotta be excited if you're Coach Drew down at Baylor. 8-2 run for Luhai after Montverde scored the first seven. A block by Malut. The tap-in, though, is good for Queen. And he keeps that basketball high. Patty cake, patty cake. If you're a young big fella, no reason to bring it down. Caden Mingo, one-on-one -on -one now with flag. Stops, his pass is deflected. Dangerous cross-court pass that was picked off. Robert Wright off the glass, and it's a five-point lead for Montverde. And that's Patrick Queen again. Derek Queen, apologies, with his head up, seeing the floor and finding Robert Wright running the floor ahead of the defense for an easy one. Patrick Queen, a good linebacker. <laughs> Derek Queen built like a linebacker. Inside, flipped it up and in for Nigel James, and he's been really good at the Nigel, start here. He is on one right now. He is slicing and dicing, getting into the teeth of this defense. Normally a facilitator, but he can make shots, especially when a defense keys in on VJ and Gaiden for Luhai. Knocked out of bounds, it'll stay with. Montverde, they're definitely keying on VJ Edgecombe right now. Some substitutes into the game for the first time. Michael James doing his thing, and Coach John Buck sung his praises, and only one word to emphasize his style of play, categorize him as a pit bull. Here's Queen with a size advantage, misfires on the floater over Tajay Jones, who just checked in. So did Kion Anthony. Left wing three-pointers off the mark by James. Quick outlet pass. Here comes Wright, one-on-one -on -one with the junior Anthony. Nice finger roll finish. That is a nice move in the open court. Surveyed, a little bit of a hesitation to get the defense off balance and then attack. Edgecombe trying to use the screen to get away from flag. Now he's guarded by Asa Newell. Who signed a letter of intent with Georgia and comes off the bench for this Eagles team. Down the lane, Jones somehow finds the angle off the glass. Big time take by Tajay Jones. Stepping up into the moment, six foot seven, 206, utilizing all that length right there on that butter roll. Flag's been quiet and they're gonna get Edgecombe with the foul. Looked like he got a lot of ball there as well. That's gonna be the first against VJ Edgecombe. He's gonna have to beat him to his spot so he can't get into a rhythm. Like the aggressive nature right there by Luhai. Gotta stay up and make players like Flag uncomfortable. Inbound pass is picked off by Ben Michaels. Looking to run. Anthony fakes the pass, lays it up, and Edgecombe is there to clean it up, but no. Wave off the basket. The foul is against Montverde and Cooper Flag. So Flag fouling Kion Anthony on his take to the basket before Edgecombe 
followed in with the slam, so Anthony to the line for two. Good spacing right here on the break. And a little bit of a ball fake to try to take away the shot blocking ability. A flag right there in that two on one situation. Smooth stroke for Kion Anthony, whose dad Carmelo was one of the most prolific scorers in the history of the NBA. And, and good scorers get themselves in the rhythm of the game at the charity stripe, and such has been the case for Kion. 82% in EYBL play, 18 for 22. 18, 19 for 23 now. Smooth lefty stroke for Asa Newell. Makes it a four point lead for Montverde. The answer on the other end, yes! Tajay Jones for three. Now if you wanted scoring, and you wanted high frequency, and a lot of possessions, this is the game for you, and Tajay Jones has been balling thus far. Montverde scored the first seven, it's been tight ever since. 18 to 17. Flag makes the defender slip and knocks down the three pointer. Uh, welcome to the big time, Mr. Jones. Flag making him touch earth. Step back, knocked it down. Here's Jacob Ross. Jack of all trades off the bench, burrows his way to the basket and is fouled inside. Derek Queen protesting the call, but it's against the big man for Montverde, and that's his second. Uh, knew it wouldn't be long, and Mr. Flag wanted to show up here in Long Island to put on a show so with a step back move like that. And you see that silky smooth stroke right from the shooting pocket, big time. Off the inbounds, Jones came down on the sideline, so Luhai turns it over after the foul was called against Montverde. Final minute of what has been, to say the least, an entertaining first quarter. To say the least. Lots more to come. <laughs> McNeely wide open as Queen as Jones fell down. They kick it back out up top. Newell misses this three-pointer. Wright's offensive rebound put back is no good. Loose ball, bodies flying to the floor again. And this foul will go against Asa Newell. Good battle on the boards right there. First to the floor typically pays dividends. And Mont Bird has been getting them up from beyond the arc. Three of five so far from triple, compared to one of four for Luhai, who has definitely been trying to control the pace and tempo by getting more points in the paint. Ty and Anthony, his first full season with the Luhai program. Into the front court, met by a double team, knocked out of his hands. Backdoor pass is picked off. Here's Wright ahead of the field and finishes on the run. Speedy, first to the basketball, Robert Wright right there. Second time this game, he's gotten ahead of this defense. Just out willing and out toughing his team on the break. Shot clock is off. They're looking for Edgecombe. Nearly a steal by Flag. Edgecombe has a step into a three-pointer. That's off the mark. Flag the rebound. One second, Wright lets it fly. No good. On target, but no good. And the first quarter comes to an end. Montverde holding a six point lead. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the 23-17 after one quarter here at Hofstra. Nike EYBL Scholastic from IMG Academy is brought to you by Nike. Only basketball. Chipotle, real ingredients, real flavors. Chipotle for real. The Army National Guard, the next greatest generation is now. And Gold SN, maximize your potential. The Bob McKillop Invitational here at Hofstra University, honoring one of the legendary basketball figures in Long Island history. A tribute video being shown for the great Bob McKillop right now. A uh, connection to a lot of the teams, Austin, playing in this event today. He played for Chaminade and he played for Hofstra. He coached at Holy Trinity, which just played the previous game against Chaminade. Bob McKillop also won five state titles as the head coach of Long Island Lutheran, perhaps best known for his work as the head coach at Davidson from 1989 through 2002 when he won 634 games, including coaching Stephen Curry before he became one of the greatest players in NBA history. Queens native is one of those players coaches that becomes 
an influential figure in the guy's development that he has the opportunity to coach outside of the game of basketball. One of the things that really spoke to me was outside of the success of the Stephen Currys of the world, he had a 100% graduation rate for all of his players that came through his program at Davidson. That's big time. His son, Matt McKillop, is now the head coach at Davidson. My greatest memory of his run there, and many people's greatest memory, was the 2008 NCAA tournament when that Stephen Curry-led team went all the way to the Elite Eight and nearly knocked off Kansas, losing 59-57, a game ahead of the Final Four. Meanwhile, we take a look at tonight's player spotlight, brought to you by Chipotle, and you see how VJ Edgecombe likes it, the burrito bowl, steak and brown rice, cheese and sour cream. I can get on board with all of that. Protein pack, <laughs> straight to the point. I it, like it. Well, Keep he's going to need it for a game like this tonight. Well, he sure will. Second quarter underway. Montverde up by six. Malouk loses the handle. Robert Wright has been a steadying presence so far for Montverde. It's the fifth turnover so far for Luhai. Montverde has been very aggressive and handsy trying to create turnover situations. Wright and Edgecombe collide midair. The future teammates with Baylor. Edgecombe comes away with it, takes it coast to coast, and Flag disrupts his shot. Nice physical tempo being established by this roughing crew, allowing these players to showcase their talents without disrupting the flow of this game. Jacob Ross called for the reach in there against Flag, who is looking to force the issue. We've got a packed arena, and people want to see what these players can do. And you can showcase that talent out in transition. Got to respect the flow of this game thus far. Liam McNeely headed to Indiana University using his frame and is fouled inside by Nigel James. So two quick fouls here to begin the second quarter for Luhai. McNeely, 8 for 10 from the line in EYBL Scholastic play this season. Consummate winner, won a gold medal with USA Basketball in the under 16 in the FIBA America Championship Games in 2020. Florida Rebels AAU team member and one of the many McDonald's All-Americans on this Montverde team. McNeely knocks them both down. Montverde has its largest lead of the night, 25 to 17. Just over a minute gone by in the second quarter. Nigel James handling the ball. Ross up top for Mingo, one on one with Wright. Mingo, a little hesitation. Kicks it into the corner for Malouk, who lets fly from three. Wright skies for the rebound. He can hit those. He hit two big threes in their recent game against IMG, but probably can work to get a better shot than that. McNeely can hit those as well. That one doesn't go, and an over the back call against Asa Newell. So far in this game, Montverde has done a much better job of sharing the basketball. Nine assists compared to two for Luha. James has it poked away from behind. Out in front of the pack, Curtis Givens lays it up and in over the charging Mingo. The eighth fast break, break point for the Eagles in the first half. Givens started the play on the defensive end, and there's an important answer for Caden Mingo to make this an eight-point game. Nice job dropping off the defender, and how about the soft touch and the kiss off the glass, playing angles and a lot of shot blocking prowess for Montverde. Two minutes gone by in the second quarter. A sold out arena, the David S. Mack Sports Complex, the Mac the energy, in Hempstead, New York. The energy in here is incredible. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off. We've got the Luhai cheerleaders right behind us. You may have heard their presence as McNeely knocks down that three, his second. Coming into this game, 13th in the EYBL in 2.3 three pointers per game. He already has two here tonight. Mingo turns the corner, bounces it into the corner for James, who answers with a three of his own. 
James shooting at 41% on the year. He has been leading the offensive charge for Luhai. Already with nine points. Flag calling for the ball that time. McNeely feeling it. That's his second in a row. You got to respond to that and chop out accordingly and make shooters drivers. He's starting to get into a rhythm. Good ball movement here. Edge come looking to get going. Monvert has done a good job on him defensively. Loses his footing, but kicks it out for the Mingo three. Too strong. Flag rips the one-handed rebound. Right from the wing. Maluk skies for the board. Mingo thought about it. Now he's going to shoot the mid-range off the glass. Tough angle. Impressive shot. Very impressive. And the second bank for him in this game. And that one from around midi. The mid-range touch. Working on that game. It's paying dividends. Nine-point Montverde lead. Edgecombe takes it from behind away from Newell. Some numbers for Luhai. James, bounce pass underneath. Mingo. That's a nice play by James. He made Montverde defense commit with a little bit of hesitation and was allowed to take advantage of the 2 on one as a result. From the corner, a three-pointer is good for Curtis Givens, and both teams are starting to heat up. That's too easy. Montverde is stroking it from deep. 54% hitting almost half your shots from beyond the arc. That's a horse shot right there. You've got to run him off the three-point line. Edgecombe looking for the matchup he wants. Crosses over, down the lane, jump stop. No, but the follow is good. That's tough. That's just pure athleticism and will. Following your shot. Getting up there almost above the rim. He almost was able to dunk that back. The quickness that he gets off the floor on that second jump is impressive. It's crazy to believe that last season was his first season playing high school basketball. This doesn't make sense to me. Bounce pass inside for Flag against the zone of Luhai. And Cooper Flag gets free. He now has five. Right jumps the route, picks it off. Looking to push again for McNeely. And he's fouled hard going to the basket. Liam McNeely hits the deck, helped up by a couple of teammates immediately, and he'll shoot his free throws. Oh, I heard a swarming to the, the, the basketball. That is their fifth steal. This token pressure has been problematic for Luhai thus far. That's their seventh turnover in the first half. As a team, they only turn it over 9.3 times per game. And, you know, despite size and despite matchups, those are the things as a basketball player that you can control to make the game easier on yourself. I imagine that'll be a point of contention at halftime. Liam McNeely puts Montverde up by 11. He's the high scorer in the game so far with 14 points. 6'6", 200-pound senior out of Richardson, Texas. Ranked 11th in the ESPN 100. They have four players ranked in the top 12 as of this week. It's tough to beat a team like that with that kind of talent. <laughs> Here's Mingo, triple teamed, kicks it out to Edgecombe. Spin move down the lane, switches to the left. Queen taps it, he's playing with two fouls. Right nearly lost it, goes against Edgecombe again. Those two have had some battles inside. Jones comes away with it. Mingo fakes the three against McNeely off the glass and in. That's a tough take right there for Caden Mingo. Luhai's lead and score. It seems as though every shot opportunity, even at the rim, has been highly contested. Got to respect the ability to finish at a high degree of difficulty. Eight points for Caden Mingo. Flag sitting on five points right now. Dumps it into Queen. It's knocked away. Scooped up by Anthony. Edgecombe has Jones on his left, shovels it back. Kyan Anthony for three, in and out. And a bear hug underneath as Curtis Givens hits the deck. How about this take right here, Kane oh, and Mingo. The body control, able to move that basketball out from the purview of the defender and finish with a nice soft touch. Well, the physical play continues here in the first half. That foul was called against Ben Michaels. Mingo was described as a consummate Luhai guy. 
one of the few that's been in this program since freshman year. Inside pass for Queen, and he's very tough to handle when he gets that kind of position. It's just size, strength, and will versus the speed and quickness of Luai, the battle of different types of offensive attacking. You mentioned Caden Mingo. The Mingo tradition will continue here beyond this year at Luhai. His brother Dylan is one of the best sophomores in the country. A little banged up tonight. That's why we haven't seen him yet. But a key piece of this rotation when healthy. That is a tough three-point attempt with the shot clock winding down and is a 30-second violation. It is, but credit Robert Wright the third with really, really good defense right there. He didn't go for any of the ball fakes from Mingo. That's when you want to reset, move around, and get into some offensive continuity to try to move this Montverde defense. Just over a minute to play first half at Hofstra. Montverde slowly but steadily increasing its lead here in the latter stages of the second quarter. You see the size advantage. Queen against Jones into the corner. Flags three-pointer is good. Heck of a pass by Derek Queen. When you're operating on that block and on the baseline, there's only a couple of places that you can spray the basketball opposite. And Cooper Flag got to that, that area. Edgecombe stops his dribble in the paint, kicks it out to Tarjay Jones, his jumper. Flag with the box out. Good ball movement underneath. Touch pass for Queen, but he's blocked by Tajay Jones. Jones staying with it, but Queen too strong inside. After all those mic and drills start to pay <laughs> off for you, keeping that basketball high and how about the stick to it of this? If you don't get it the first time, go oh, right back at it. Derek Queen, the second eagle into double figures now with 10 points. Shot clock is off, six seconds in the half. James to Jones on the baseline, out to James, has to let it fly, comes up short. A strong finish to the second quarter for Montverde gives them a 47 to 30 halftime lead. Montverde sharing the game. Such a joy to see. Everybody's getting in on the action. 16 assists for the Eagles in the first half. If you're open, they'll find you. 16 assists is a high number. High, high number. In 16 minutes of basketball. Liam McNeely. Walking off the floor after a 15-point first half and a seven-point lead for the undefeated Montverde Academy Eagles who are looking to remain that way. The most hyped game of the year. We're halfway through all Long Island. Second half coming up with Montverde on top, 47-30.
Getting set for the second half between Montverde and Lujai. And tonight's first half stats are brought to you by Army National Guard. A 17 point lead for the Eagles, their largest of the night so far. And you mentioned a stat right at the end of the second quarter, Austin, that I just found so telling on how this game is going. 16 assists for Montverde in that first half. Well, there's a reason that they've been scoring the basketball not only at such a high clip, but you could also just tell that it's a little bit easier for them out on the court because they're playing with a completely wide open and spread floor. Field goal percentage, 56% from two for Montverde, and they're shooting it at a 58.3% clip from beyond the arc as well. Basketball can be fun. It's most fun when you're sharing the bill. Liam McNeely leading the way with 15 points. Derek Queen has 10. And oh yeah, there's also the number one player in the country, Cooper Flagg, only took four shots in the first half, but he was certainly a factor as well. How nice it is to not have to go out and press and worry about trying to get the most amount of points on any given night. You look at that stat line, that's a guy that's content on making winning basketball plays. Three or four shooting, eight total points, two of two from beyond the triple, but how about this? Four rebounds and five dimes, five assists. He is a complete stat stuff. The complete package, Cooper Flagg, the Duke University commit, Pat O'Keefe, and uh, Austin Johnson here. <laughs> I'm Austin Jackson for the moment. <laughs> we had Patrick Queen, the uh, Baltimore Ravens linebacker, Austin Jackson, the former Detroit Tigers center fielder. We're crossing all sorts of sports here tonight. Second right. half underway. Here we go, partner. Here's Edgecombe. McNeely picks him up on a switch. Edgecombe was two for nine shooting in that first half. The Montverde defense really keying on him. Passed on an open look there, down the lane, comes up short. Gets it back though, does Lou High, and the tap is, it's good for VJ Edgecombe. That's the intuitiveness. You keep getting up shot opportunities, and you hope that your fortunes change, and those shooting percentages start to rise. Three of 11 thus far, but that's a good start here in the second half for VJ Edgecombe. The defensive matchup here, Ben Michaels trying to stay with Cooper Flagg, who loses the handle out of bounds. It'll stay with Montverde, 13 seconds to shoot. That's nice gap presence right there for Luhai. No clear driving lanes right there for Flagg. He's going right into the teeth of this defense. McNeely with those 15 first half points to lead all scorers. Seven seconds to shoot. Lob pass inside for Queen, blocked from behind, but that's a goaltend against Malouk. How about that pass right there by Liam McNeely? Not the easiest angle to go high low on, but he put that thing right on the money. Only where Derek Queen could try to make a play on. Right past the defender's ear. Perfect spot. On the rope. Here's James who had an active first half. Edgecombe looking for a sliver of daylight. The follow again, flag all over the boards. And this is where you can see the size and length disrupting. A lot of these Luhai drive opportunities. The rim protection has been doing its job for Mumper. McNeely bumped along the baseline by Ben Michaels, who picks up his second. Lob pass, Cooper flag! Oh, a jolt of electricity just surged through this crowd at Hofstra. Malouk bobbled up and travels. Well, if your defender is involved in ball screen action and blob situations, just know he's probably about to get the basketball back in some capacity. He threw it up. Cooper Flagg brought it home and is hanging on rest. Woo. The play of the night so far. Flag the third Montverde player into double figures with 10. No two louder than the last two. Queen position inside. That's a beautiful basketball right there. Queen does such a good job fighting for position before that basketball even comes his direction. Look at Edgecombe to the rim. And that's that fast twitch athletic ability. You give him just a glimpse of daylight, he's like a running back hitting a hole. 
Eight points for VJ Edgecombe. McNeely from the corner. Little swooping left-hander. McNeely hits the ground hard, the floor hard, excuse me. Is helped up after the basket goes. That is tough. Nice awareness. He was thinking drive for that left-handed running hook shot, but he also had his eyes back on Derek Queen and ultimately decided to shoot it. But it's his night leading this charge offensively for Montverde. Why not go and be aggressive? Mike Woodson at Indiana University is getting a good one here. And it's been a turbulent year for the Hoosiers, but you gotta be excited on what's on the horizon to have this type of instant impact. And Liam McNeely, he can shoot it, and you see the dribble drive ability as well. They're gonna welcome him in Bloomington. After the free throw is made, giving McNeely 18 points, John Buck calls timeout for Long Island Lutheran. Sensing that the game is getting away from the Crusaders a bit here in the second half. Yeah, and it's been the defensive intensity and the length of Montverde that has applied a lot of pressure and created easy scoring opportunities and allowed for them to get into the flow early on from the onset. Montverde has gone six players deep so far. The starting five and Ace and Newell Played eight minutes in that first half. And Luhai still searching for their first double figure score. So you look at the point productivity for Montverde, they have Queen with 14, McNeely with 18, and Flag at 10. Got a couple of Luhai players right there on the brink. Edgecombe with eight, Mingo with eight, and James been leading the charge at nine. We saw Kevin Boyle a moment ago, 13th season as the Montverde head coach after 23 years in this area as the head coach of St. Patrick's in Elizabeth, New Jersey. His team up by 22 right now. I got indoctrined to New Jersey high school basketball competing against a Kevin Boyle led and Kyrie Irving charged St. Patrick's team. And boy, was it a baptism by fire. <laughs> Edgecombe misfires from the foul line. And there's a whistle on the rebound against. It's against Derek Queen, who's protesting his case and picks up his third foul. Jacob Ross returns to the game. Sending Ben Michaels to the bench. New shot clock for Luhai. Mingo met by a double team, spins away from that. Ross cutting back door for the easy lay-in. Nice recognition right there. The defender with sleep. Allow for Jacob Ross to sneak back door and finish quickly behind the defense. Queen pops out, lob pass, back door, flag, trying to guide it in. Hits the deck instead. Numbers for Luhai if they hurry. Ross, edge come. Off the glass, wow. That is so tough right there. That is what makes him a special player. His finish ability, despite taller defenders hanging all over him, and his body control. The hang time, impressive for VJ Edgecombe. Queen loses the handle, but he's fouled inside. Luhai thought it was off to the races that time. Instead, the foul is against Jacob Ross. Big time play right there, VJ Edgecombe. The body control, as you just alluded to. But he gets that perfect spin and that nice touch high off the glass. Great finish in the boat. Edge come up to 10 points. Inbound bounce pass for Cooper, who gets position. That's great fight. Doing your work early to create space and scoring opportunities in the blob situation. Edge come driving at flag. Mingo fakes the three, poked away from behind by Wright. Taken back by Mingo, didn't give up on the play. One on one with McNeely. Over to Edgecombe off the pump fake. Open look, Nigel James for three, comes up short. Cleanest look he's gotten all night. It's ironic that those are typically the most difficult ones to convert on. Nobody within his airspace. Especially on a night like tonight, you're not used to having 
that luxury of time and space. And it's been a struggle from beyond the arc. Lou High now, two of 11 from triple. Mingo hits the deck, flag misfires. Rebound scooped up by James. Mingo collides inside with Givens, who's gonna be called for the foul. Alir Malouk, Kion Anthony back in the game for Luhai. Edgecombe trying to find some space. Instead finds Mingo. Offensive rebound, Malouk, and that's a away from the ball foul as Tarjay Jones, excuse me, Tajay Jones threw Givens to the floor. Aaron decision right there. No need for that type of decision away from where the action was. You just took away a second chance scoring opportunity for your teammate. In a game like this, Montverde being as dominant as it has been, not a lot of margin forever for the other side. Precisely. Got to take advantage of scoring opportunities because points have been of a premium for Luhai thus far. And those are the types of plays that can get the momentum going back in your favor. Montverde still shooting above 50% for the game. 23 out of 40 from the field. You see Kevin Boyle there, and you mentioned the name Kyrie Irving. Boyle is the only high school or college coach to have a number one, a number two, and a number three pick in the NBA draft, and he's doubled up on all three of those picks. In fact, he's had three number one picks play for him, in addition to Kyrie Irving, Ben Simmons, and Kate Cunningham. D'Angelo Russell and Michael Kidd Gilchrist, number two overall picks, who played for Kevin Boyle. Russell played for him at Mount Verde. And Joel Embiid and RJ Barrett, number three picks in the NBA draft. Let's look at this list and the resume of Division I basketball players. And I quickly realized that I have two complete full pages to paint. <laughs> Safe to say that Kevin Boyle is a heck of a coach and he's done a phenomenal job developing talent during his coaching tenure. And it has to be nice for him to be back in his home area. Played for Bill Raftery and PJ Carlissimo at Seton Hall before transferring to St. Peter's. And those are not bad coaches to get your start under. A hard, hard-nosed player during his playing career. Back to action here. John Buck, meanwhile, staying close to his roots. Class of 2002 at Long Island Lutheran before he went on to play for Wake Forest. Open three for Wright the third. McNeely chases down the long rebound. Drives right at Anthony, bounce pass inside, and Newell will go to the line. Activity on the rebounding and the glass, offensive rebounds for Montbert, creating second chance scoring opportunities. Those long rebounds are the toughest to corral for a defensive team. But also shows you the importance of being healthy, and we talked with Coach John Buck about what was he worried about coming into this game, and he specifically mentioned the interior presence and missing God's will, and how in the loss at Columbus in the hoop hall, Boozer twins hurt them, and how it was gonna be Really important to have gang mentality rebounding here against Montbert. And thus far. Well, it's been big man by committee. In the absence of God's will, Air Harin. They hope to get him back before the end of this season. Air Harin has already signed his letter of intent to Seton Hall. Play for Shaheen Holloway. 
who coached both St. Peter's and Seton Hall, the two schools that Kevin Boyle played for. He's been doing a phenomenal job with the Pirates this year. Got them in the upper echelon of the Big East Conference. Anthony pulls up from the foul line. Flag the one-handed rebound, looking to push. McNeely, right down the lane, absorbs the contact. Foul by Tajay Jones will send McNeely to the line. Cooper Flag pushing the tempo, keeping his head high. But how about this post position by Newell doing his work early and showing his numbers, using all 6-9 at big frame. Jason Newell, the 12th ranked player in the country in the ESPN 100 as McNeely misses the first. Did I mention to you, Austin, that the Lou High cheerleaders are directly over our shoulders? <laughs> really? I can't, I can't hear them. I think they should actually turn the volume up a little bit more. 0 for 2 for McNeely, so it worked. And Maluk is fouled, trying to corral the rebound. Is he fouled or is it an out of bounds? I think it's a play on. Could have been a foul but the ref wants to keep this basketball in motion, not disrupt the flow. The full court pressure, forcing Luhai and Ben Michaels to call another timeout. Well, we're right in the vortex of the cheering sections here because we have the Luhai cheerleaders right behind us and directly to my left is Kelly Boyle, the wife of <laughs> Kevin Boyle, the head coach of Montverde. Safe to say we're right in the thick of things, <laughs> my friend. We're Switzerland right now. That is very true. 2.09 to go. So this is day one of this two-day event. Tomorrow, a doubleheader here. Montverde will play Legacy Early College at 6.30. And then Long Island Lutheran will take on Brewster. And that'll be a top 10 matchup in an entertaining and important game. Both of them will, of course. The Lujai Brewster game will be at 8.30 tomorrow. You can catch both of those right here. Austin, you and I will be back for them. We got a chance to see both of those teams early on today, and Brewster was able to prevail. Phenomenal guard play, well-balanced approach. Dwayne Aristote is he's a problem from a matchup standpoint. Six foot seven, 205, highly touted, four-star combo player from the Netherlands. Elijah Crawford going to Stanford, six foot two, 188. Really does a really good job of getting that team corralled as their quarterback. So that'll be tomorrow. A decidedly pro Lujai crowd here tonight, as you would expect, as we are on Long Island. But there's also the curiosity to see in person the number one player in the country, Cooper Flagg. And safe to say he hasn't disappointed. Not at all, and still operating in a very efficient manner, five of eight from two, two of two from beyond the arc, 12 points, six rebounds, seven assists. Full court pressure from Montverde, Anthony gets it across the timeline. Maluk, James floats it up. This Montverde defense right now is relentless. Yeah, they're everywhere. Lou High is looking to go and contesting shots, not breaking the plane of verticality, doing a good job of defending without foul. Flag working the baseline. Good ball movement and knocked away out of bounds by Anthony. It's nice anticipation right there, Kai and Anthony. Filling out very nicely. You can tell that he's going to continue to grow, work on his game. Here's Gibbons, lob pass, Newell, reverse. But I like him down in Athens. Georgia Bulldogs commit. Doing a nice job of getting to the opposite side where the defender wasn't. And we've got a foul. Look at this, sharing the game right here. Nice touch pass from Givens to Newell. And defense was sleeping and he's able to take advantage by cutting back door. 
That last foul was also against Newell, his third. Queen also has three fouls as Anthony knocks down the three. Shooting around 35%. It's a nice job stepping up and taking what the defense gives him. Right on target. McNeely can't answer, but Newell on the offensive boards again. Flips it up and in. His fifth rebound of the night. Able to stick it back, keep that basketball high. First 10th point. Anthony drives baseline, knocked away by Wright. Givens couldn't quite save it, however, so it'll stay with Luhai. Less than a half minute to play here in the third. 50 possessions for Montverde this game. Four turnovers. They lead the league in a number of categories, including fewest turnovers at 8.8 .8 per game. Here's a foul against Cooper Flagg. So the shot clock is now off, 24.9 seconds in the quarter. Flag, that's his second foul. Edgecombe, 10 points to lead the way for the Crusaders. Anthony more aggressive here in the third quarter, comes up short on the reverse. Rebound is grabbed by Flag. 10 seconds to go, looking to push into the front court. Loses the handle right into the hands of Newell. It's been that kind of night, that kind of season for Montverde. A turnover here, Flag. his last second heave is after the clock expired, and the third quarter comes to an end. How about this, that hostage dribble, and even when he makes mistakes, it ends up in the right hands. Newell running the floor, and able to corral that for the slam and the open floor opportunity. Montverde continues with the onslaught. 66. there in the third. Here's the senior point guard, Robert Wright III from Wilmington, Delaware. Played his high school basketball in Philadelphia before transferring to Montverde. Loses his footing, kicks it out to a wide open McNeely, and Malouk grabs the rebound. Crusaders looking to push. Cross court to Edgecombe. Touch pass to Mingo off the glass, but Malouk is there for the follow. Johnny on the spot right there. Nice job, Maluk, creating space without shoving in the back and keeping that basketball high for the putback opportunity. A delay of game was assessed to Long Island Lutheran after that basket. Cuts the lead to 24. Here's Flag coming off a curl. McNeely took his eye off it for a moment, gets it back to Givens. Five seconds to shoot, and McNeely's put back is no good. Loose ball in the paint, scooped up by Ross. James, one on one, right, at right, and finishes. Tough play right there, forcing the issue. 
what he lacks for in height, he surely makes up for more than with heart. Back-to-back -back buckets for Lou High to begin the fourth. McNeely looking to answer, cannot. Newell saw the rebound squirt out of his hands. It'll stay with Montvert, a new shot clock. Six and a half to go in the fourth. Here's McNeely looking for Newell, and Edgecombe came from the weak side. Front court pass to James. Picks up his dribble as McNeely cut him off. Edgecombe, no hesitation there. It's an air ball. It's nice help defense right there by Edgecombe. Anticipating that high-low look for Newell in the paint. And he snuffed it out and made the first play on the basketball and got to it. Two minutes gone by here in the fourth. One, two, two, three-quarter court pressure right here for Luhai. Derek Queen muscling his way to the basket. Foul by Tajay Jones. Third foul against Jones, the senior from Waterbury, Connecticut. Undeclared senior. They have a few of them on this Luhai roster. Queen, the footwork inside. That is beautiful footwork right there. Uses his body so well. Edge comes pass, is deflected and picked off by Wright. Flag, posting up, Edge come and found a lane to the basket. And here's the motor that everybody talks about. 528 in the fourth quarter and you can tell the determination to get to that basketball, establish good post position, and finish hanging on rims. Nigel James answers from the foul line. John Buck imploring his Crusaders to show some full court pressure here. And no blinking by Nigel James. He's going to continue to play through the final whistle. He's been a bright spot for Luhai. 13 points, 5 and 9 shooting. He's been exactly what his coach John Buck said he was. When teams key on Mingo and Edgecombe, James can make them pay as flag was fouled on the jumper by Tajay Jones. Look at this post. You've got a player trying to fight around, so you got to reposition and be first to that basketball, and Cooper Flag was just that. Take advantage of a defense over playing with a quick spin and a nice dunk opportunity. Cooper Flag at the line. So it was a two-point attempt by Flag. So two free throws here. Cooper Flag, a 70% foul shooter in league play. Top 25 in the EYBL play, 15th. Came into this game 21 of 30 for 70%. Less than five minutes to go here in the fourth. Here's James trying to get around flag. Steps through. Calls for it back from Jones. Here's an open look. Mingo comes up short. It's knocked out of bounds off of Flag's hand. Blue high now three of 16 from beyond the triple. Just haven't really been able to get things going from deep. Nigel James, Ross, spin move. Mingo the pull up, that hasn't been there for him tonight. Queen's gonna handle it himself to right. Back to Queen, but a nice job breaking that up by Nigel James. Good recognition and the fake in a two on one situation. Got to jump at the ball handler to think that you make him think you're committing, and he was also able to make a play on that alley oop attack. There's flag turning on Edgecombe. McNeely from the corner. That's the benefit of playing with a guy that commands that much attention. 
you got to make the decision if you're going to run and double. As you see Edgecombe able to convert on a triple of his own, get on. But players like McNeely love the spread floor situation and the space to knock down three. Flag is grabbed by Tajay Jones and hits the deck. Tajay Jones, if... That's on Jacob Ross and not Tajay Jones. I thought it might have been Tajay's fifth personal foul. So Cooper flagged to the line for two. And Kevin Boyle goes to his bench. Caden Allen checks in for the first time. He's just the second sub to check in tonight for the Eagles. Allen, a 6'5 sophomore from Loganville, Georgia. And Cooper Flagg now with 18 points. Kion Anthony. Edgecombe finds Anthony cutting back door. James can't find the range from the corner. Edgecombe still fighting and is fouled going after that rebound. By his future Baylor teammate, Robert Wright III. Wright ranked 25th in the ESPN 100. Edgecombe ranked fourth. Offensive rebound, back to Edgecombe! Down the lane with authority. We talked to Coach John Buck about his approach and what he means to this team. And he is the pure alpha. And you're gonna have nights where shots don't go in, but it's about your mentality and how you deal with adversity. And the message that you send to your team about what you're going to learn from this game and take into the next game as a result. And plays like that shows that he's going to compete through the final whistle. This is insane athleticism. Give him a running start and he will put you on a poster. Big time play. You said it well. This is not Long Island Lutheran's night, but many of the fans who are actually filing out now with two and a half minutes to go. They will remember that highlight by V.J. Edgecombe. Cooper Flagg has himself a 20 point night in front of this New York crowd. Givens thought he was off to the races. Anthony recovers. Looking for some daylight. Here's Edgecombe driving on flag, loses the handle, and Cooper flag fouls him. His third. That one on one matchup tonight, and we've seen it a lot, has been interesting between the star players from each team. Yeah, but I mean, when you're talking about Montverde, I'll rebuttal you which one. <laughs> when you're talking about both teams, I remember which one. Such a diversity of different styles of star players that you have as Derek Queen checks out after a, another big night. 16 points, 9 rebounds, 3 assists. VJ Edgecombe hits both free throws, and that will end his night. Replaced by Caden Mingo. Edge come to the bench with 17 points. After a slow start, turned it on here in the second half. So Caden Allen is on the floor for Montverde, and so is Caleb Gaskins for the first time. Wright knocks down a contested three from the left side. Wright's had a nice night as well. Nine assists. 
to go along with nine points now. Nice kick out from Anthony to find Nigel James from the wing. And James nearly picked the pocket of Robert Wright, but it's called for the foul. Nigel James has phenomenal upside. Got to be excited if you're a Lou High fan that he has a, a, another season of development at his disposal. Think about the opportunity and the void that will be created with the graduation of B.J. Edgecombe. Nigel James putting right to the line where he hits the first. And Cooper Flag. His work done tonight replaced by his twin brother Ace Flag, who sees his first action. Lucas Lima also in for the first time as Kevin Boyle extends his rotation. Right to the basket, Mingo comes up short, contested by Ace Flag. Kick out, Lima, three-pointer for the native of Sao Paulo, Brazil. James, a hard drive. Results in a foul against Dahani Miller. So we'll get to see both of these teams in action again tomorrow. First, Montverde at 6.30 against Legacy. And then Luhai takes on Brewster at 8.30, right here at Hofstra. And you can see it right here on this stream. Dahani Miller. Two Crusaders run into each other as Mingo misfires on the three. Still a frenetic pace here, all the way to the end. You got guys trying to come in and get their first buckets in a long time. And Nigel James to the basket draws the foul. Foul against Gaskins, the sophomore from Melbourne, Florida. You know, Nigel James, the way he played tonight, he didn't really cheat any of the paying customers here at Hofstra. No, and listen, when you're at this level and in this type of showcase, win or loss, you could still find the positives of coming out and playing well against this type of competition. Man. Nigel James, a player that has a ton of suitors after his talents at the next level. When you come out and put 17 points up against the number one team in the nation, that only bodes well. Ace flag has it knocked away. 10 seconds to go, James to the basket. Rebound grabbed by Gaskins. Here's a chance for Allen. And flushed home by Lucas Lima, who had five points here at the very end. And Montverde, number one with a bullet. 90 to 58 is the final score. Number one over number two. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes day one. He did just about everything, mixed it up and showed his three level ability. He was able to diamond, nice athleticism, and the emphasis of the dunks hanging on rims. How about the night for the number one player in the country? 20 points on 7 to 10 shooting, 2 of 2 from 3, and perfect from the line. You gotta love his ability to also eat glass, 7 rebounds and nine assists. What is it that he can't do? Tell me that. <laughs> we saw a little bit of everything here tonight. Flag with those 20 points. Liam McNeely, the leading scorer in the game with 21. Derek Queen with 16 and seven rebounds. While Luhai was led by VJ Edgecombe's 17 points, matching the 17 from Nigel James.
Big time athleticism. Number one versus two didn't disappoint. Wasn't a seat to be had here at Hofstra University, a phenomenal showcase of the stars of tomorrow. And the good news is, like you said, we get to do it tomorrow. Can't wait. We'll be back here tomorrow for day two of the Bob McKillop Invitational, starting at 6.30 when Montverde takes on Legacy. And then the second game of tomorrow's doubleheader, Long Island Lutheran against number eight, Brewster, coming your way at 8.30. And we'll be back here for both of those games. So for my partner, Austin Johnson, and our entire crew, thanks for watching the Bob McKillop Invitational from Hofstra University. I'm Pat O'Keefe. Have a great night, everyone.